ABC, hello again. Back here in these confines of my living room. To start, we're listening to The Bradford, a Precision, their first LP from 1993, a record. Um, speaking of this vinyl tag, I've got a really good deal on, actually, now that I've looked it up, there's copies going for about the same price I got, but this was going to be part of one of my answers, but still got under median price for this, so... In any case, that's what we're listening to. Great band out of uh, Virginia. Post-rock, ambient, the first and the very first cranky release. That's just what we're listening to. I'm doing the vinyl tag today, uh, stunty edition, or as it's being billed by some, the alternative uh, vinyl tag, which I don't get, because when I think of alternative in terms of music or records, I think of 90s alt-rock, or you know when they were calling music that was um, underground that then became sort of mainstream alternative but it's the stunty edition and stunty's questions um great i mean really uh thought inspiring and you know but the right difficulty level sort of easy to come up with things it's good for people who are into all kinds of music so i encourage you to do it if you've already done the rob walker tag which i didn't want to do i just wasn't really inspired by those questions um they just didn't, just, just didn't really get me interested so i wasn't going to do vinyl tag but uh, here we are doing the stunty edition. So, all right, we'll get into it. Hopefully, it won't make it too long, as everyone likes to say, including myself. Um, yeah, uh, I, when I do these, I like to um, show things I haven't shown before. So sometimes there's better answers for some of these, but it's stuff I've either recently showed or uh, shown before. So. I am trying not to show uh, stuff that I've not shown before. I'm just going to fix the lighting. Going with natural light today, but I just wanted to fix the lighting a little bit. Anyway, so with that said, let's get into it. First record, The Longest Vinyl Quest. Now this certainly qualifies for a bunch of records from last year. And I am going to show something I've shown before. But there's a story. I'll try to tell some stories today. The Don Beekoff Celestial... Um, Celestial Explosion. This is on the keyboard label. Tompkins Square did the reissue. Um, I've had the I've had the reissue for such a long time, and going back to about 2015, I think it was. Um, Angry Mom Records uh, was out on a dig with George for the store, and we were at this rural place in Pennsylvania. It was essentially like a trailer park, but this guy took one trailer park car or whatever and convert it into a record store and he'd been there for many years now this guy was dying and he did pass away eventually so me and George were there to clean out his store and he couldn't get around too well and and so he had lots of stuff sort of priced in bins or whatever but then he had all this other junk on the floor you know we're talking disgusting floor um, not nice uh, <laughs> definitely should have been wearing a mask that day and gloves I might have, anyway, so we're looking through all of his dollar stuff. Now, he had stuff priced in bins that were, like, expensive, but he was giving us, like, super deep discounts on it because he was clearing out. And I found a copy of this in the dollar bin, which I, yeah, George would have probably grabbed it, but I knew what this was right away. And uh, I'm like, George, take this. And so we found a ton of this stuff that day in the dollar. But I didn't, I screwed up. I forgot to tell him to put it aside for me. And he put it on Discogs for like 40 bucks and sold it immediately. And I was like, damn. So I'm, <laughs> I screwed that up. But I got this beautiful clean copy for a little more than that, but a very fair price. Way under 100 which this can go for between 1 and 200 bucks. Um, so really happy to get it. Anyway, uh, Don Beekoff Celestial Explosion. Uh, John Fahey inspired Cosmic Folk Album. Um, his one and only record. This is a very pretty obscure label. There was some, a lot of budget stuff on this keyboard label for whatever reason. It was on this one, so uh, New York label. I highly encourage you to check this out. The Tompkins Square reissue is like less than ten bucks. So, all right, uh, 2023 best deal. I just mentioned the Brad for anyway, but I'll go with. Um, I think I might have two here. Yeah, because I was narrowing it down. I'll talk about, the, I got a bunch of great deals at the Ithaca Record Fair. This is the original pressing on the Infidelity label of Martin Rev of Suicides. Uh, first solo record, this was like $10. And it's not an expensive record, but 
you'll see, you couldn't, you know, this is more like a $40 record. It could be more even at times. There is a reissue of this. So it's not an insanely incredible deal, but 10 bucks I'll take all day long from a dealer who doesn't like, doesn't usually give deals. I don't know why this was so cheap. But it's a perfectly fun copy. Martin Rev, uh, self-titled album. You know, just this is just him doing synthesizer stuff, sort of one half of Suicide, you know. Here I am blanking on the vocalist name uh, <laughs> in Suicide. Yeah, I'll think of it in a second. But Martin Rev is the synthesizer side of it, while uh, eh, is... <laughs> The vocalist and so this is just really cool keyboard uh, synthesizer experiments pretty out there sort of like harsh at times um, some very melodic parts including the song Mary the first song is a, is a real fun uh, whimsical track so uh, super happy to get that anyway just flip the record but yeah suicide Alan Vega vocalist I uh, also want to show this just a shout out to Brandon Faust in the head who pointed this to me um, sometime sometime last year uh, I was I was looking for this record and he saw a really cheap eBay auction for it. He already had it. This is the original pressing on Sky. Uh, this is an early '80s release, 1981, I believe it is. Yeah, this was like 25 bucks in the U.S. So great, great deal. And, and a shout out to Brandon. Thanks, man. Um, brand new artist. I'll go with this. I did show this once briefly. I don't know if everyone remembers it, but. Loris S. Sarid, or Sarad, Sarad, Sarid, music for tomato plants. Obviously, you're going to be thinking about Plantasia here, but uh, this is on the Constellation Tatsu label, and um, it is an ambient record. Similar more in style to the, of course, we have red vinyl. Why, why wouldn't we? But this was a record released in 2020 on tape. First time on vinyl, 2023, so it is a new release. But as an artist new to me, um, if you like that ambient experimental, um, again, playful sound. Check this out. Um, it's, you know, dedicated to tomato plants. This is Loris Sarid. Um, record people would be surprised that you had from the VC. Well, I'm going to show a single <laughs> and then an album. Yes, I love this song, Pump Up the Jams by Technotronic. I think it was just last year. Um, obviously, I know this song very well, but uh, it's on Def Jam. It's on Def Jam. Anyway. I was thinking about the song, I had it in my head. Yeah, what label? I think this is uh, the SBK label, so distributed by Ver no, distributed by Capital. But I had the song in my head, me and my family, we were we were just really joking around playing the song. Me and my wife were like, damn, this song is good. This song's a banger. And uh, one day I was finally records for Angry Mom, and of course, this was in the pile. It's like a $2 single. So I grabbed it. I, I love this song. So, yeah. I'm happy to have it. <laughs> But I'll also go like Alex did and, and talk about hip hop. Um, this most deaf album, uh, the, the the ecstatic, not the, I almost said the chronic. The ecstatic is a masterpiece. I think it's it's fantastic. I I've talked about the song. Um, um, where is it now? Quiet dog bite hard on this. So good. Here we have on the back. Uh, this is sort of a tribute, sort of like the jazz photo in Harlem. I, have to, I forgot to look into what this photo was, but in any case, uh, this is great. This was originally on the uh, downtown label from 2009. This is a 2017 reissue. I think, I don't know if it was issued on vinyl originally, but anyway, here it is. Great. So good. Most Def is now going under a different name, but it's just very um, sort of super simple and direct uh, productions on this you know and his 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 wordplay his his flow is just straight on point that's what I'll say all right so VC inspired now this whole list is really a lot of these answers I could re I could reply with different people in the VC who I'm influenced by stunty of course this is his tag and a lot of these questions. Um, you know, uh, I could reply all in influenced by Stunty, but this one I have to talk about. Pierre Ben Susan two, um, yeah, number two Ben Susan. This is on the Cezanne uh, uh, label. Now this is a cheap record; it's a French record, but I, I picked uh, Stunty specifically, and in my um, my conversations with Stunty, and you know, because we were acquainted and friends and everything. I called him up 
with an Instagram call, video call, as I was flipping through the bins at WFMU. I'm like, hey, check out this stuff. What am I missing? And there was p tons of stuff I didn't know. And so he literally was in a hot tub. <laughs> a sauna or a hot tub? I think it was a hot tub. And he was like telling me, oh, grab that, grab that. It was hard to hear him. I didn't have my headset on, so I was just doing it through the phone. And he was on Instagram with me doing it for like 10 minutes at least as we flipped through everything. And yeah, he was like, I'll definitely grab that, grab that. And the prices weren't that cheap. However, the dealer was, Patrick was his name. He was willing to really do hard deals. So I picked this one out. I was really glad to get this. This is sort of a French folk record. And I really am um, into this. It was great. <laughs> Pierre Ben Susan. Um, from 19... Uh, yeah, we got to look up the years, right? The jumping out at me. Probably early 70s. Original French pressing. Thank you, Stunty. Um, oh, and I'll also talk about the vinyl douche. Because no one really covers new indie rock or new indie pop shoegaze like like the vinyl douche he's really similar to chris cole and and stunty as far as like certain genres and being so just not missing anything and unearthing all this stuff you're like how how is he even finding out about this stuff um that's the vinyl douche sam he's when it comes to independent indie rock which previously i kind of thought i was you know maybe not recently but over the last 15 20 years that was always my wheelhouse Anyway, this is a band I sort of knew as they were, because they were basically were called Disappears when they were on Cranky, and this is Fax. It's the same band, really. Still Life in Decay. It's one of my favorite records of the year. I know a few of you have talked about this, Dave and Steve. I'm super glad. I would have missed it if not for um, The Vinyl Douche. I don't believe anyone else would have mentioned it to me, but this this hits so good. It reminds me of Uzeda and Jesus Lizard and um, bands with a real good rhythmic backbeat so good on the Trouble in Mind label okay here's one that's fun record from your teens now I wasn't buying a lot of records when I was in a teen I was buying a lot of CDs and honestly listening to the radio and listening to tapes so records specifically not really however as a gift for Christmas a bunch of my friends were in bands here in the band Chimes of Bayonets and a few other people we do a big record exchange well now it used to be like 8-9 people now it's like five of us so that has changed a bit but we all buy records for each other and it's like a, you know we have a fun time so we exchange records i'll show what they gave me well i'm going to show one of them there's some other ones but this one i have to show this is return of the rentals now this is matt sharp from weezer he has res resurrected this project a little bit as a follow-up this is the first album and many of you will remember the song friends of p okay now, also, many of you will know, because this is a this is an in-demand record, that this has never been issued on vinyl. Now, what I'm holding here is a vinyl record, and it's on red vinyl. And this, and if you can tell, not the greatest photograph. I don't know how well you can see it. But what is that telling you? This is bootleg as fuck. Okay, <laughs> I don't know where my friend Joe found it, but this was awesome. I love this record. I. I I actually haven't played it yet, but I know it so well. It's a, it's a really good pop album with lots of Moog synthesizer. If you remember the video Friends of P, this is really a still from it. So, I don't know why this hasn't been issued on vinyl. This obviously reeks as an RSD thing. For whatever reason, it hasn't happened yet. Maybe it's gonna, but happy to get a bootleg of this, I guess. Uh, we'll see how it sounds. Um... Matt Sharp, vocalist, Moog and bass. Everyone's playing Moog on this almost. Petra Hayden's in this band. Pat Wilson, I forgot, was in this band from Weezer. This is Weezer at the height. He did this on the side. This was on a major label and everything. So, anyway, that was a gift, but that is a record for my teens. Favorite cover? I'm going to go with this Michael White cover. This is a beautiful spiritual jazz record, uh, The Land of Spirit and Light, with Prince Lachey or Prince Lasha, whatever. Cecil McBee, Ed Kelly, Bob King, Kenneth Nash. It's on these Impulse labels. This is the first pressing. Michael White, violinist. Fiddler, whatever. Uh, it's produced by Ed Michael, like most of Impulse records, from 1973. This is great. It, it has a bit of a jazz funk feel to it. Um, it gets pretty out there. This could be a Strata East title, I really think. Uh, the Land of Spirit and Light, and then this awesome cover. I got this last year. All right, a band uh, you wish didn't release a record. Now, obviously, it's hard to show a record that you 
think they shouldn't have released if you have it, but in some cases that you do because you bought it and it sucked. But in this case, I did not buy their record and I haven't bought a few records from them in many years. I haven't bought any records from them in many years, except for this one on the show. And it's a band I absolutely love from the 90s. I'm talking about Gotta Buy Voices. Now, I know a few of you, I think Hannah, the Omaha introvert, showed one of the Gotta Buy Voices records. It's one of her favorites. I think Steve did. But this is a band that um, I love Bob Pollard in the 90s. Those records are absolute pillars of indie rock and lo-fi, and I have them and love them still. But I don't need any new... I haven't bought a new Gotta Buy Voices record in many years, and they released three sometimes four records a year, not including Side Project or Bob Pollard Records or whatever other band name he's coming up with. But this was from last year. This is a compilation. The first time they've ever done this, I think, if I remember correctly, compiling uh, singles, a singles comp from um, the early 90s. So I'll show this. This is Scalping the Guru. But as far as, I don't even know what the name of the new Guided by Voices record was. There was probably, like I said, probably three of them. But uh, they didn't need to release it. Uh, VCLT. There's been so much good VCLT. I, I have to focus on a couple. Dave gave me this Pram record, Dark Island. When we met up, he found this at Lunchbox Records, I believe. This is from 2003, original pressing on Domino, UK only. Really, this was sweet, Dave. Thank you. Um, I've de Pram is definitely a band that will qualify for the last question in this, but a band I had known about since listening to college radio, but didn't own anything. And, you know, Stunty, this being his tag, this is that's one of his favorite bands and one he's championed quite a bit. So thank you, Dave. And I have to also throw out Chris Cole, who just sent me an incredible box of records that I'm making my way through and I will do a video about. But I do want to talk about the first one I listened to. I've listened to two or three so far. Music of Five Elements by Sam McClendon. One, one and only release. This is, a, you know, sort of in the New Age realm. A musician and acupuncturist. song I always felt like sounds like Spaceman 3 but it's from 1982 a real cool uh, uh, all vocal synthesizer bowed bass piano the guitar on this is, was sort of not my favorite part about it but it was good when he's not playing guitar I absolutely love it it's coming from the right perspective sometimes guitar in the 80s can have that sort of crystalline a little bit too elevatory kind of a little on the cheesy side but um, the rest of this was pretty special pretty spectacular so uh, this is uh, issued on the Spirit label. It's kind of these kind of deals. Okay. Great VCLT from Chris Cole, the master of of many things, including records and also giving great and remembering records that you're after. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Dave. Um, record that you got for a credit. I, I guess I pulled two of these as well. I think, didn't I? Yeah, uh, Oliver Lake. I think I showed this briefly, but this is a promo on um, one of these excellent Aris the Freedom labels. Oliver Lake is out of the, I believe, the St. Louis Black Artist Group scene or, or group of musicians. I grabbed this for Bikita Carroll being on it, who's who's super um, underrecorded. You know, we talk about Orange Fish Tears, but he's only on a handful of records. He's on this one, uh, the Trumpeter, but he's also again with those same musicians. Uh, such as Charles Shaw, Bobo Shaw, Don Moye, um, this guitar in here from Richard Martin, as well as Joseph Bowie. Uh, but the, the the factor that had me bring this home was the Bikita Carroll inclusion. So this is uh, NTU Point From Which Creation Begins as a promo copy on the Arista Freedom label 1976. Okay, a little more uh, Le Bradford. Next, a um, couple more questions. Oh, well, I had another one with credit and another shout out to Stunty. But I got this one, well, after he played it, and then also because of the credit, a Holger Shukai on this SIF record, uh, or SYPH 1982. It's a post-punk group out of Germany. I think it's 82. But Holger Shukai brings, he brings something to this, but his spirit is in this, this the minimalism and dubby, certainly the dubby feel to this. Um, really... Uh, Ooh, my insert is like stuck in here. How's that? There we go. 
what he brings to this really comes through, and it's the favorite, my favorite thing that I heard. Shokai does play bass, percussion, and horn. Um, is he listed as producer? Not necessarily, but it feels like he did. Um, yeah, I think it's Knockbar is the song that is a knockout. But yeah, this this I definitely brought home for the Holger Shukai uh, inclusion there. So uh, Sif, this is self-titled, I believe. Yep, self-titled. 1982. Okay, so. Um, oh, I skipped over the jealousy generator. So here's the jealousy one, like the one that someone in the VC showed that you're definitely jealous of. I'll bring back Dave again. He showed an original Nigerian pressing of, of Ofegi. I love this album, Try and Love. This is the Academy Records, um, or I think Voodoo Funk Academy Records reissue I've had since it came out. 2008. Um, damn, Dave. And he showed a bunch of things in that video that the Peter Lemur on uh, the local color I've definitely been looking for that so Dave good on you <laughs> for getting that Noble Records and of course the Zambian pressings you have those I would include too I have no Zambian pressings but tons of reissues um, one of these days hopefully when I'm when I finally get down to Noble Records I guess we'll fake a try and love okay two more an album you'd like to see reissued in 2024 I don't have it it's on the palm label it's Khan Jamal's uh, Give the Vibe Some, I'll Show the River. I uh, got this, I think, two years ago with Bill Lewis. This is not the best Khan Jamal record, but it's still lovely. Great duet record. Pretty chill, pretty atmospheric. But Khan Jamal is um, obviously a favorite. And pretty much everything, well, I haven't heard everything he's done. But everything that I've heard, I'm after, or have, or want, or whatever. And that one on Palm has never been reissued. Maybe the Souffle Content U label will do it. Give the vibe some. It's I saw it at WFMU for like $1,500. So I'm going to go with that. There's a lot of things I could pick. Let's just go with that. But this is the nice Philly Jazz pressing of uh, the river. And last. Did I pick two? Yeah, I did. An artist to spend more time with in 2024. Jean Schwartz. Another stunty shout out. Maison Rouge. I was... I went for this. A few records I went went for. It was on the Celia label. This was so cool. I need to spend more time with this record because I, I listened to it and I sort of have to think about what was happening on it. I do remember it feeling like very ahead of its time sound. Um, not necessarily like a straight composer uh, record or sort of experimental, although it is. Uh, a little dark, a little industrial influenced, if I remember. I need, again, I'm gonna have to play more, more, spin this some more. 1980, Maison Rouge, Théâtre de la Pontinière. So there's that, and I forgot, again, I pulled the second one. This one I haven't shown yet, but it's an artist I wanna spend more time with. We've been talking about this artist um, in our chats some of you in VC and uh, Alex inspired this purchase from a video he did this is the uh, Jazz Meets World series with uh, uh, Tony Scott Tony Scott is somebody I want to investigate some more this is Jenger Bali the Indonesian All-Stars fascinating um, kind of incredible record it you know it brings to mind the um, at the helm record on Folkways Tony Scott playing clarinet and playing with some of the so the cream of crop musicians from Indonesia, including the guitar shown here, uh, Jack Lismana. It's got all the liner notes attached to it. Um, I was fortunate to be able to get this from a European seller for free, with free shipping. Had to, you know, talked with them and they were able to they were able to do it. This is on the Saba label. Accepted my offer and everything, and it was fair. Well, thanks, Alex, for. Um, uh, doing a video on this. It, it, this one really, really registered and landed with me pretty hard. So, Tony Scott, there's a luxury to get. There's some cheaper records, which I'll probably uh, check out. They're probably an Angry Mom, even. So, this is uh, Jenger Bali, Tony Scott, and the Indonesian All Stars. And that is my vinyl tag. Been cool watching. Chris Cole and Dave do this, and uh, I have watched some of the other vinyl tags too. Um, 
So, yeah, I'll watch some more. Um, maybe Fred, Big Star 1000, will do one. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll grace us with his presence on that. I'm not, I won't be holding my breath. But uh, anyway, thanks again, everyone. And um, hope you enjoyed that.